about YouTube. A uh, beautiful winter's day here, last day of winter here in Australia. We're coming into spring and it's been beautiful the last few days from mid 20s to yesterday even hit 32 degrees. Um, so I thought I'd come into the greenhouse, get another video done. Um, and this time on seedlings, last time I did the greenhouse tour, I had a lot of people ask me questions about how I grow seedlings, uh, what I do to get them from seed to size. So I thought I'd give you a full run through of what I do to get from a tray of, you know, fresh seeds, freshly sown, get them to germinate, get them start growing, move them down. This is where I harden them off outside of the domes and what you can expect in growth rates, or at least what I get in uh, growth rates. Um, I don't know what I, well, I, I sort of do. I, I followed my own sort of gut with a lot of stuff, and it seems I stumbled across just improving my own growth rates really well. So this is what works in my conditions and for me. Uh, obviously, every, all recommendations on how to grow all plants, you have to figure it out for your conditions. They may vary a bit from how I do things. So I'll bring you over, I'll show you a few stages. Um, and when you got there, that's some fresh seeds I sowed a few weeks ago, and all the way up to this beautiful Truncata lavicola that I sowed. So it was the 13th of February last year. So this is, yeah, it's not even 18 months yet. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, 18 months old now. So I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with that. I will admit this was the, the biggest seedling from the Grex. Um, from early in, early on in the stage, it really did take off. So I selected it out for myself. Uh, I do have a bunch of smaller ones that I tried in a different media. It didn't work out for me. Uh, so I had to put them back into my usual mi mix. And so they're still growing out, and they'll catch up in no time, I think. Uh, so I'll bring you over, hang him back up. Right. Pop you off the tripod there. I'm just enjoying a uh, coffee in my greenhouse. So I start all my seeds in. Domes like this, these are some shelves I set up, yeah. ends up being storage, TES meter, syringes for fertilizers, scissors, some cable ties because they're always handy. Uh, but just bring you through this setup, zoom out a little bit. So these are just cheap uh, domes and tray sets I found off Amazon. I used to use the little green Bunnings ones, but due to the amount of seeds, of juice this year, I needed to find something that could just hold a few more, a uh, few more seed pots per per dome. So I've always got the lid open. You can see it does get a bit of condensation in here, either way. Um, and I got them underneath this grow light here. Now this is a Mars Hydro VG80, uh, which fits perfectly for these 1,200 wide shelves. They do do a VG40. If you've got a smaller space, uh, they're fit relatively new lights, but so far I'm absolutely loving them. So I'll put the, pop this back off. So uh, if you haven't seen, I did do a video on how I sow seeds. It's a mix of uh, cocoa peat and perlite with some fresh po uh, cocoa peat over the top. Sprinkle your seeds on, and off you go. Now I always date. Oh, I try to, I've forgotten a few. I always, but I try and date when I sowed the seeds, and that way I get an idea of growth rates of when they, how long they take to germinate, uh, how long they take to grow out, and all the various stages. So they're only a couple of weeks old. They haven't germinated yet, but they're good, nice looking seeds, nice fat embryos. So I've got a lot of hope in, uh, in those. And so these are this this whole section here is pretty much all new seeds. I think this one belongs in the next tray over, but move stuff around to make space. 
Uh, so this next one over, we're looking at, what are those? Just over two months old. And you can see there, I mean, I've got a little bit of algae and, um, ah, I did know the um, term for it, the slime coming on it, which you can wipe out with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. So I'll be going through and doing that after I do this video. It's on the, uh, the to-do list, which is ever-growing. Um, but that just comes from keeping it too damp. And I do struggle finding that sweet spot where it's damp and moist enough for the seeds to germinate and do well, but not too wet that you get stuff like algae. You can see the green on the media there. Um, and this slime mold. And next to that, ah, these are actually a month old. These are a month and a half old. And uh, these seeds are looking really good. And as you can see there, I think this is the only, only one I needed two pots to spread these seeds out. As you can see, they start to get great germination on that. Um, I'll start seeing germination. Best I get is two weeks, but generally it's more, uh, four to eight weeks on good fresh seeds. Occasionally it takes a little, hmm, sorry, a little bit longer. But I've had germination as long as nine months, uh, which was some horticultural clipiata seeds I got a few years ago. So if your seeds aren't germinating, don't stress. Keep treating them the same and let them be. So once you move over, now this is, unfortunately, this moss absolutely drives me insane. You can see it taking over the pots there. At this stage of moss, I will generally pick them out and put them into fresh media, uh, which you can see I've done here. I'll zoom in a bit. Yes, there is a little bit of moss restarting, but I think it gives the seedlings a much better chance of survival. I have had this moss choke out seedlings before. Uh, so the conditions I have here, it's intermediate conditions in my greenhouse. Uh, we're getting up to about 28 degree days and 18 degree nights. So there's a bit of a drop, and I find it keeps most things happy. I'm not trying to grow true lowlanders. It's just not my thing, and trying to keep a greenhouse that hot through winter here isn't much fun. You can see the wind's kicking up again. It's been howling here lately. We had winds up to 100 k's an hour the other day. Uh, there is a, it's 80% uh, humidity in here. And I always aim for really good, strong light. Now, the seedlings I keep at around 100 ppfd. Uh, don't ask me what that stands for, but it's the light that plants can actually use for photosynthesis. Um, so I keep that for, for the first few stages of their life. So once, once I start getting good growth and probably around Around this size is where I tend to pull them out of the domes, move them down a shelf, and this is where I just let them harden off and get them acclimatized to the greenhouse. They've come out of 100% humidity, so you want them to toughen up, put down some better roots, and getting ready to be potted out. So, and these here, these are the 11th, so November last year. So, hmm, that seems a bit slow, actually. But uh, at this size, this is roughly where I want to start separating. You can see they got good, thick, healthy leaves. They'll have some nice root systems down below. Um, but as you can see, I've got a few others that are coming up in need for it. Um, but also, once I've got them out here and sort of... Excuse this as a pointer. Once you start getting a few traps, and particularly around the size of that one there, is where I'll actually start fertilizing. And you can push your fertilizers reasonably strongly in the right conditions, but I'd recommend around that 100 um, parts per million once a month seems like a good safe bet. 
to keep keep them going without pushing them too hard and burning the roots, burning the leaves, stuff like that. So once I get through that stage, I move them out into my seedling mix, which is similar mix to cocoa, heat and perlite, but I start adding some cocoa chips in just to give it a bit of a chunkier area media. Uh, you can see there. And this is where I start lifting my fertilizers. You can see little grey dots of fertilizer pellets. That's a Nutri-Coat that I'm testing out, and so far, seen pretty good results. Uh, let's see. Oh, no. Nope. I'm not sure what the dates were on the Rocco crosses, but most of these are only about six to nine months old. You can see there. We're starting to get some nice colour in the leaves from the lights. Now these are still under the same light levels as I germinate the seeds. Um, so I just keep them watered, keep them moist. You don't want them drying out at these early stages because they don't have a good root system. They don't hold that much moisture in the leaves. And if they do dry out completely, it's going to be uh, pretty catastrophic for them, unfortunately, and really knock them back. So you see there, I've got lots of crosses coming through and growing out. Um, and yeah, once you get, I find once they get to probably, um, I can't find it, even so that size, that's where I find them become much easier to care for. You don't have to baby them as much. And they start really putting on some size from, uh, so it's about a what five centimeter plant. They're seventy seven sorry seven centimeter pots. So from there they can start really jumping. And I'd say these rockos are probably closer to the nine month mark. So the next stage up is this here, which is a uh, of HGI Maxima Dark. And as you can see there, they're starting to really put some size on. This was. There, June last year. So we're at 14 months. And I reckon if I put this into a hanging pot, like these ones, uh, this would really explode in size now. And it is all my plans to start potting a few of these out. And you might realize there's not a heap of color showing on this yet. And that's because of the levels I've been fertilizing them. Um, at these sizes, I'm not too worried at what the pictures look like. All I'm really focused on is getting that plant to a good size, getting a good root structure down, uh, to get nice and strong. And I did actually test recently. Sorry, getting a bit warm in here. It's really kicking on. Um, I had a few seedlings that I I wasn't happy with their growth rates. They weren't catching up, so I actually just I put them outside on my potting table um, with the intentions of throwing them out and you know, got rejected from my uh, nursery stock. But left them outside, full sun, didn't water them, just in the wind, the rain, whatever came comes through. And they were actually still kicking six weeks later outside. I went down to 30% humidity and these seedlings were only four, oh, probably five to ten millimetres across, so under a centimetre. And it does show that the methods I've been using, at least for me, has given good strong plants that can handle you know, just about any conditions. Unfortunately, the other day they got blown off the table and they're in the lawn somewhere now, so I won't see how long they could survive outside. But I think that's most of what I do for seedlings. You know, once you get to that 100 mil mark, Similar to this guy, is definitely ready to be potted out. You could even pot it out small. I think there's actually two in this pot. So you, oops, sorry, I dropped the camera. But that's that leaf there is the biggest leaf on the smaller of the two plants, and at that size, you could definitely move it up a pot size, stick it in a one forty mil hanging pot. And it'll jump up in size and give you some great growth from there. So if you've got any more questions, always feel free to message me. I'm always happy to help and answer questions. And until next time, cheers. Bye.